What you doing, babe? I am making more kale powder. We are still on the train, y'all. I'm telling you, we had so much kale. That is literally all we've been doing is freeze drying this. So, you did a batch last night. I did a batch last night. Now I'm just trying to chop it up and make some more powder. Um, since that's primarily what we do, I do want to get the dehydrator out and make some kale chips though. Oh yeah. One thing I wanted you to answer too, because you guys know we've been doing a lot of freeze dryer content. Um, and one of the main questions we get asked is how is that affecting our electric bill? And we actually just paid our electric bill. We did. Um, we didn't see any significant rise. Our, our yeah. electric bill was maybe 20, maybe $30 higher but we've been running heaters in the greenhouse yeah heat heat mats yeah uh, i've got a heater running in the um well house. in the well house you know pretty much non-stop um we have turned all the heaters off though yeah we've turned the heaters off just because we didn't have um any freezing temperatures however they ran for three weeks straight yeah so with that being said, my electric bill is twenty thirty dollars higher, and I've ran the freeze dryer at least every other day. Yeah. Um, so there's our little tidbit on that. Tidbit on that. I know there's so many of you that are like on the fence about getting one. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'd do without mine now, to be yeah. honest with you. And I can't wait. Like we're just we're freeze drying this. I've got a bunch of kale in the freezer that I want to freeze dry. Um, and then, man, when we start getting. Oh, I know. I'm excited too. We start getting the tomatoes and <laughs> oh all God. the all the okra and all the good stuff. Like, yeah. uh, I'm gonna wear my freeze dryer out. So. Yeah. What you got cooking? It smells good. Uh, I've got beef roast, fermented carrots, um, potatoes. Ought to be good. So a roast. Yeah, and that's like I put a can of beer, I put soy sauce, like all the goodies onions okay garlic <laughs> so okay uh, ought to be good well i'm gonna let you finish this i'm gonna talk to them for a minute and then you want to go with me outside to check on everything yes ma'am okay all right nathan's been working on that i actually just got out of the shower <laughs> um i worked so hard yesterday we went out of town and then i just we got in late and i was pooped um but we got tornado warnings going off on our phone because it's spring in arkansas and that's just how it is here it was supposed to be raining all day but it's not there yet but you can tell it's coming in so i want to get outside and do all the things i need to do before it comes a downpour and we've got more tornado warnings and we actually like they might be serious who knows um but i need to check on the seedlings in the glass greenhouse all we have in there right now are a couple trays of peppers and tomatoes because i have the heat mat set up in there but then nathan made me some tables um for the seed starting greenhouse and i wanted to show you guys that um, because i know that many of you guys are working with what you have which is a lot of what nathan and i have done most of our journey of farming and gardening is we bootstrapped it right <laughs> we just made do with what we had um, and so finding the panels and the steel to make the tables has been a challenge uh, one it's just hard to get it right now and so sean is you know built our greenhouse and he's also building our tables but he just can't he's having a hard time accessing materials and so nathan made me some out of wood and center blocks which i know a lot of farmers that do this because it is just so much cheaper so i really wanted to take you guys down there and show you that because if you are uh, in that season of where you are building your own greenhouse or maybe you're having one done but you want to kind of cut cost on what you can cut cost on i think these tables would be a good way to kind of lower uh what you're spending on your tunnel overall wouldn't you agree oh yeah absolutely. yeah the only bad thing is they're super low you could make them higher i mean having the steel ones are going to last longer over time but i don't think this method is bad um and another thing i want to mention before we head outside are you just gonna meet me out there yeah okay Nathan and I are getting ready, and by getting ready, I'm saying we're making sure we've got plenty of product, um, all of our banners. That's what I've got in my living room right here. You guys will actually see some of these on the shop soon, but we got our first big order of harvest baskets in. Uh, but we are actually going to be speakers at the Oki Homesteading Conference, and we're going to be setting up a booth and be a vendor this year, which is really exciting. Um, it is in Oklahoma. It is put on by... Uh, keeping it Dutch and Arms Family Homestead. There's some pretty big YouTube channels 
And to my understanding, this is gonna be a pretty big event. I don't know if you guys have heard about it or not. I'll be talking about it more um, in the next week or so. I'll put the link down below if you guys wanna check it out. It's on March 18th and 19th, I believe. Uh, so a couple hours from here, we're excited. We would love if you guys are in the area to come see us, let us hug your neck. Um, I know when we went to HOA, it really just filled us up being able to meet so many of you who follow us in our journey. It just was such a special thing. And I'm hoping that this is going to equally be just as special and that we'll get to meet a lot of you guys. But I did want to mention that while I had it on the front of my brain ordering product for that. But let's head down to the greenhouse. It is muggy, you guys. Hot and muggy. I didn't even open the doors this morning to the tunnels because it's been overcast like this. I'm hoping... It's not like a hundred degrees in there or anything. <laughs> Peep at this cute little garden gate. <laughs> uh, y'all have been so sweet with your comments about my yellow door, so thank y'all. All right, oh yeah, 80 degrees. Let's open that bad boy up. It's looking pretty empty these days. Look at that germination, about time. So we got some tomatoes, none of my peppers have come up, which isn't surprising, peppers take forever. And then I just started all those uh, just a couple days ago. They're tomatoes and peppers too. So I wanted to take a minute and tell you guys this sweet story. Um, I've been going live on my Instagram every Friday in the greenhouse starting seeds. It's been really cool. So if you are on um, Instagram, I'd love for you guys to join me on Friday. It's just been a sweet little way to kind of engage um, and just hang out with people <laughs> for an hour. Um, but this past Friday, I went live and I talked about how um, I'm growing a lot of hybrids and high producing varieties this year, um, particularly in the high tunnel. But I will always make a space in my garden for heirlooms. Um, I just think the story of an heirloom I think it's important to keep heirlooms around. And so that is what that whole tray is behind me for the most part are heirloom uh, tomatoes because they do have a meaning and they are special to me and I do want to always find a place for them in my garden. Uh, well, this past weekend I went and visited my papa Kenneth um, who has dementia and is not doing really well. So we loaded up the kiddos and we went and saw him and I have just the most vivid memories of growing up and being at my papa's house. And he had this huge garden. I mean, he grew grapes and blackberries and peaches and plums and blueberries, like every berry you could think of. He had this massive garden. And I remember every summer, me and my brother and my sister, we'd go over there and we would have to help Papa tend to the garden. And what that looked like was picking weeds by hand. And at the time, it was the worst job I could have ever possibly been given. Like, that is not what I wanna do, is be outside in the hot Arkansas heat picking weeds. Now, as an adult, I realized how valuable and special that time was with my papa. Um, and I realized how much that's kind of molded me into the gardener and the love for the garden that I have now. So when I went and saw him yesterday, we started talking about gardening. Um, and it was so sweet. He would just, you know, he remembered that. He had very vivid memories of his garden. And he was telling me all these stories and all these different things he would grow. And he told me he had some seeds out in his freezer he wanted to give me to plant in my garden. And so we went and got them. And they were some Paul Robison uh, tomatoes. There was another heirloom tomato varieties. And then there were some black pole beans. And I thought that was so sweet. I don't know how much longer um, my papa is going to be with us. And so I'm going to start some of those tomatoes this year. And I'm going to grow them in my garden as a sweet little reminder of what he means to me and how he kind of really started my journey in gardening. And so I'm excited to start those. I'll probably bring them out here here in a little bit uh, if the weather's not too bad and, and start them. But you know, it's so funny. Everybody probably has those vivid memories of childhood. And for me, it was always my papa's house. It was always the garden. It was always him making jelly. He would bring us these big cases of jelly every single year and it lasts us for the entire year. Um, and it's just... As an adult, I just, I appreciate those memories so much and I'm hoping to create some memories of him in my garden this year. I think that'll be pretty sweet. Got some eggs. Got some eggs. Y'all, we are looking to add to our flock. We're thinking about 
hatching some of our own out. I really want some copper morans. We don't have any that lay those dark brown eggs. Yeah. What's so, your friend Brittany? Oh, Round Rock Farm. We need to she reach out to her. She has beautiful eggs. Yes, yes she, she does. does. Egg goals. Egg goals. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Of course, it's been overcast all day, and as soon as I come into the tunnel, what happens? Sunshine. The sun peaks from out of nowhere. All right, can you guys see these tables? So you've got, how, how wide are those boards, babe? Uh, those are two by sixes. And then we took all of the center blocks from the cottage garden. So we took all of the center blocks that were from the cottage garden, moved them down here. You guys can see we've just slid the um, the two by sixes in them. We've got a middle brace, and then it fits these trays on here. I mean, we definitely needed two uh, two by sixes, but it works really well. And I do know a lot of people that will just like build on this to make it a bit higher. However, if you're watering, it's nice to have it to where. Uh, it's a lower like so our tables were what 30 inches that we're having built. I think so. Yeah, yeah. so Since moving them out here though things have started to Sprout a little more. I noticed that my what is this? My about gumfrina started to sprout. So I'm definitely Seeing better germination with the better lighting. Look. There's a little bitty guy right there I don't know what these are these are poppies, Icelandic poppies. So, you guys can see some of these are dry. Um, need to get them watered really well, but this has worked out pretty well. Yeah, so I really wanted to show you guys this because I think it's a great option, even if you did have to buy material. So let's say you did have to buy the center blocks, you can get those pretty cheap. And I know a lot of times you can look on like online marketplaces and get them uh, pretty cheap. So I don't know, I just, I really thought that I was not gonna love this, if I'm being honest. I just had this idea of the tables and you guys know I kinda like things a certain way. Um, and so I was like, I don't know that I'm gonna love it. And then Nathan and I did it and I was like, oh, that's not near as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, and I, so the idea is even when we have our tables built, we'll have one going all the way down, like pretty much the length of the bed of the tunnel. Then we will have one down the middle and then we'll have one on this side, but we'll have some open space up here in the front. Um, and we're hoping to get a lime tree, some sort of citrus tree um, and put in here because we will be using this um, greenhouse year round. Um, so I can put a citrus in here and I'd have to heat it a year round anyways. So I think it'll be fine. Um, but I'm gonna grab the water hose, give all this a good shot of water real quick and then we'll go see what Nate's up to. I do think one of the most important things when it comes to building tables in a greenhouse, whether you're doing something like this or you're making some out of steel or whatever it is you choose is making sure that it is level. There is nothing worse than having all of your seedlings on a table and then you're having to find wood pieces or rocks and shimmy it up to make sure that it's getting watered evenly. And so that is probably my biggest piece of advice because I've dealt with that in the past. It is a total pain in the butt. Um, and then I've just ended up having like one side that's dried out, the other side of the tray is completely overly saturated. Um, and so right now these are pretty level. I'm not having to really worry about that. Um, so fingers crossed, if we get some sunshine in the next few days, a lot of these flower seeds that I started a while ago will start popping up. Um, I'm, I'm a little concerned, <laughs> if I'm being honest, the plant cells coming up the middle of April. We started a lot of our flower seeds on February 11th and I've had no germination. Um, and it was due to inconsistent light. So I wish I would have either figured out a space in the house where I could have put them on a rack with grow lights or hooked up the grow lights out in the glass greenhouse. However, we just didn't have the time to really do that or the space. Like we were using the office for product and then half of it had seeds in it. And it was just kind of a mess. And so we had to get that all situated. But I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm just gonna relax. I know that these were some 
uh, more complicated flowers and so if I do just have to grow more zinnias and some flowers some common flowers uh, for the plants that I can do that so I'm trying to not stress out seeing the gum freena sprout really kind of like gave me a little bit of a sigh of relief like all right Jill it's gonna be okay uh, but I am keeping my fingers crossed that the rest of those babies should start sprouting up because as you guys saw uh, my little seeds starting set up in the house I mean those all sprouted in two days um, I have a couple that haven't sprouted yet uh, some lettuce seed but for the most part those like came up like so quickly and so I know the light makes a difference I'm hoping this will provide some better lighting and we'll be good to go how are the piggies? Doing good. Now that they're being fed. Now they're fed, fat and happy. I had to come down here and enjoy the glorious sound of pigs. Smacking. Smacking. Yeah. Gotta listen to it daily. <laughs> oh man. I am pooped. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that happened when I visited my papal over the weekend was I came home with an entire back trunk full of canning supplies, pressure canners, ball jars, and he only liked the wide mouth, which is my favorite too. And he was just so overjoyed because it had been sitting in his shed for Lord knows how many years. And he was so excited to have passed this on uh, to me and Nathan so that we could use it to can. And you guys know canning supplies are outrageous right now. And I mean, I probably, he gave me hundreds of dollars worth of just ball jars, mason jars, the pressure canner. He gave me one of those cool old school juicers that like clip onto your counter, which was really cool. And so I think it's just going to be super sweet. And then you guys, I just told you, my papa used to always make this jelly and that's what we got every year was enough jelly to last year. For the first time since Nathan and I have been married, so eight years, we ran out of jelly. Uh, that was something I did a ton of when we were first married and I really was getting into gardening is I'd go to the farmer's market, I'd buy all these different fruits, I'd come home and I'd make jelly. Um, and I did that for a long time and just like about a couple weeks ago we used up our last jar of jelly that I had made Nathan didn't even know what to think he was like how did this happen I'm so confused like what where's our jelly you had to buy organic jelly from Costco that cost an arm and a leg like he was not about it and so my aunt had told me hey your papa's got all these jars of jelly and it's probably not any good but if you want the jars you can take it and you know clean the jars out and my papa all kept saying, that jelly will last a lifetime. That jelly's good, but do whatever you want with it. And so this man, who has a gut of steel, starts popping open these jars. And y'all, these aren't just jars from a couple years ago, okay? <clears throat> there were jars from 1998 of Muscadine jelly that Nathan cracked into. I was in high school when he made those. I mean, I was a, I was a kid. <laughs> you were a wee little baby. I was kid. a wee little baby. <laughs> And so, not a baby, I was about like six. Yeah, okay, I was pretty young. You I probably this. helped make some. I probably did, it's so cool. Um, but Nathan starts cracking up and you could tell it was sealed properly, it looked right, it still yeah. held its color and it tasted amazing. I smelt them first. He did, he smelt them first. But they were, so boysenberry, boysenberry. grape, yeah. blackberry, mm. I mean, fantastic. They were about to throw all that away. I know. Which, the ones that are bad, we're going to feed the pigs. Nathan and I even talked about taking some of that and using it uh, for wine. Potentially. Potentially. You know, obviously not if it's really bad. Some of the preserves were were not good. But yeah. like the, the jelly jelly mm -hmm. was good. Yeah. I wish more than anything you could have seen my mom and papa's place. I mean, they were just like great vines like, that would go on forever. The most mature bushes. You know, Nathan wants to create an orchard here. And I just know you would have just loved that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was that was pretty sweet. We got a lot of canning supplies to put up today, but um, I know I feel like we robbed him. <laughs> we go down there to visit, and they start loading us up with stuff. <laughs> yeah, we took we took three dozen eggs, and then we come home with hundreds of dollars, and then In jars, <laughs> jellied gold, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I feel like that's how it always is, though, when you go to grandparents' house, you always 
get their things. Normally we're the givers though. When people come yeah, over to our house, everybody leaves with something. And it was weird because I'd called my aunts and I had asked, hey, what can we bring? I've got cabbage, I've got eggs, I've got Brussels sprouts, I've got Otis the starter. Like, well, what do you need? What can I bring you? And they're like, we don't, we don't need anything, just a couple dozen eggs. And we were like, okay. So Nathan's like, that was it? You, you didn't need anything else out of all that we had to offer? They're like, they're going out of town, they didn't need anything. Um, but it was fun. I think it'll be fun to can in those jars this year. And I used to, I used to not be as sentimental as I am now. But something about like seeing my papa get older, seeing my dad get older, I've become a little sentimental. You softy. I'm a little softy. <laughs> my papa looked so cute yesterday too. Yeah, he did. He looked good. He did. He just looked so. He's 83, and. He's lived a lot of life in those 83 years, but all right, what's we got, next? We got stuff to do in case we get- I don't know, what do we need to storms. do? Storms, uh, we gotta take Doug's tractor back. Um, that is true, our neighbor, Doug Dar, who's like the best neighbor in the world, <laughs> let us borrow his tractor. We got a lot of stuff done. Let's go walk up there. We moved everything out from the Muriel. Muriel, Muriel. Merle. <laughs> Merle. <laughs> How do you properly say that? Every time I say it, I have a complex of saying it wrong. Anyway, so we moved everything out because hopefully, if it doesn't rain all week, we've got someone coming out to bid us to level that ground. And that feels super, super exciting. So we moved all of the chicken tractors, the rabbit tractor. We cleaned up. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, Mama loved driving the tractor. It brought back some fond memories. I booted him off more than once. It was fun. Yeah, look how clean that is. So the only thing we didn't get to was stacking the firewood, but that's okay. You guys can see Simba way over there. He's on top of that big mound of soil and leaves. We've been building the compost and he's been taking guard over there. So we embarked on last week with a plan. I think we executed it well. We moved all the a horse manure that was over there. We dumped that in the compost. We're not actually going to be amending our beds with that this year. We're doing a trial with agro Ag, yeah, agro We had a guy come out last week. Very, very nice guy. There's a lot of really successful market farmers that use their product. And so we're going to be testing out some beds. You guys know we're, we're having some issues with our soil. And we actually went to take soil samples to the extension office and because super soil is in our beds they would not run samples on it mm -hmm. so we're having to do a home test we're going to send it off to a lab um luke um, luke at agrigro so we're just trying to get some things in order but i feel pretty accomplished with what we got done last week absolutely so you want to talk about this space or what well i feel like i have kind of talked about it yeah. we had to clean it up which we did so we cleaned it up that feels really good um, hopefully we'll have someone come out and bid us next week and they can get started ASAP. And so I think my goal for the month of March is just to get it leveled and then price materials. Um, so we're going to have our friend Ron who built our table come out, uh, see what he would charge us to help with some of that stuff if he has time. By the way, Ron, I hadn't asked you yet. Oh. So in this video. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel good about what we got done. We got a plan. I think I'm trying to set attainable goals for this space. It is a lot that we want to do and it is not cheap. Like bringing in gravel will be a hefty amount. I don't know what the price of lumber is now to put a roof on. Um, it is high. So we're, we're not really putting a timeline on this. I think as long as we're continuously working towards the next step in this, I feel good about that. But we're gonna get wet if we don't go inside. No. Uh, the wind is really starting to pick up. Yep, we're about to get rained on. We're about to get rained on. But thank you guys for hanging out with us today. And yeah, we'll catch you in the next vlog. Yep, sounds good. Talk See to you guys. Soon.